Favorite Wayans moment? It could be from anybody. Marlon Wayans, Sean Wayans, Kim Wayans, Damon Wayans. You know what? Uh, <laughs> that, man, look, that family special. They are. They are. I mean, Keenan Ivory Wayans put his family on the map. It will be no, I have to say, the entire Living in Living Color series because that series introduced us to so many great comedians from Jamie Foxx to David Allen Greer to Tommy Davidson to Jim Carrey. Harry. Yeah, Jim Carrey said himself, Keenan Ivory Wayne was the first guy to ever see something in me, and he put me directly on in the color. We all remember Fire Marshal Bill, man. Yeah. We all remember Fire Marshal Beef. So I would have to say in Living Color. And without In Living Color, we would not have a, a Super Bowl halftime show. I remember you brought that up to me uh, a couple months ago, right before the Super Bowl. So, I mean, I was saying, Lopez. yes, yes, indeed. But um, I would have to say In Living Color, man, because, and I can't pick out just one. But for Keenan Ivory Wayne's to produce that show, and give a big break to so many comedians, including his own family. And to, I mean, was just a trailblazer. I mean, if you really think about Def Chunk, excuse me, my bad, I'm stuttering. If you really think about Def Comedy Jam, Comic View, and shows like that in the 90s that put the great comedians that we grew up on on the map, you got to put In Living Color right up there with it. Absolutely. You got to put In Living Color right up there with it. So, I would have to say in Living Color, the entire series itself, and the way that Kenan Ivory Wayans was able to produce that show and, you know, put so many great comedians on the map. Because if it wasn't for Kenan Ivory Wayans, it wouldn't be a Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey doesn't have the biggest year, arguably, in movie history without Kenan Ivory Wayans and in Living Color. The year where he had the mask and Ace Ventura in the same year come out. 94. Yeah, 94. That does not happen without Keenan Ivory Wayans giving him his big break. So I have to say in living color, man. We all, I, we all love the Wayans brothers, but I think the impact on culture, I would have to say in living color had a more impact on culture. Now, granted, there was a lot of more funnier moments in the Wayans brothers, but impact on culture, I hate that term, do it for the culture, but it did it for the culture in living color. <laughs> I've been laughing about this one because I'm laughing right now because I thought about this one during work. Remember the movie White Chicks? <laughs> Remember Marlon Wayans, his character, him dating Terry Crews? And they played the track, Vanessa Carlton's A Thousand Miles, and then Terry Crews dancing and singing the song. <laughs> I'm trying to hold it in. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but that, 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 that is hilarious. I'm sorry, that is hilarious to me. Like, <laughs> Terry Crews, man, we won't, we probably going to have to do a very a favorite Terry Crews moment on the sports kids, <laughs> people. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, the Wayans Brothers show, that was another great one. I love Damon Wayans from My Wife and Kids. Yeah. From the show Damon. Keith and Ivory Williams, as you mentioned, fan, I mean, are they, champ, in your opinion, kind of like the Jacksons in some ways? Just how they've, like, given opportunities and how they are as, like, a family? Yeah, and in certain cases, man, look, like I said, for comedy, we don't see Pops without the Wayne's Brothers show. We saw him, got a glimpse of him on Friday, but we got to see how funny he could be on the Wayne's Brothers show. Like I said, going back to Jim Carrey, we don't see, we don't get to see Jim Carrey without Keenan Ivory Wayne's. When it comes to Damon Wayne's and, you know, Major Pain and, all of those funny movies that he paid, played in. Not to mention, man, you know, one of the funniest comedians to ever play a role with the great Bruce Willis. 
in the last Boy Scout. You know, when you talk about that character, he was essentially Willie Beeman before Willie Beeman. You know, one of those quarterbacks that just had gone bad and just flew completely off the tracks. And that movie helped personify and showed us how great of an actor that Damon Wayans was. The Last Boy Scout. People talk about the 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 comedy movies that he played in, but The Last Boy Scout was an epic movie. Mm-hmm. So I got to give credit where credit is due on that one. My favorite one from the Wayans is Marlon. Um, the good basketball movie that he did with Kadeem Harrison, The Six Man, love that movie. Um, but the Wayans Brothers, I watched that show still to this day on HBO Max. That's when I watched that. I watched Fresh Prince. I watched Martin. But man, man, the Wayans they they gave us some great content. Yeah. Fun fact, you know the Robin that you know that was gonna play in Batman forever. It was originally supposed to be Marlon Wayans. I didn't know that. It was really supposed to be more. They, in fact, casted him for the Robin role. So, and to my knowledge, it's he still get paid to this day because of that casting. Because it was supposed to be, if Tim Burton would have stayed as far as creating those Batman movies in the 90s, it was supposed to be him and Harvey Dent was still supposed to be Billy D. Williams. And Robin Williams, God rest his soul, was supposed to be directed. Mm. But uh man, I, I'm sorry, Jeff, if I terrified you with um the Terry Crews moment on white chicks, man. I, I'm sorry, that, that was a hell of a movie though. That was a hell of a movie. I'm just like I, I every time I think about that movie, I think about one thing. I think about him being at that men, at the table with that damn menu, ordering everything except the kitchen sink. <laughs> I have a steak smothered in onions. <laughs> I have a <laughs> I can't even get it out right now. But uh that's the first thing I think about when I think about that movie is him being at that table with Terry Crews. What about the runaway part? You <laughs> <laughs> when he when he finally reveals who he is, and then Terry Crews is like, You mean to tell me that you're not no, I'm not I I'm not a girl. I'm I'm not I'm not a woman, I'm a guy. And Terry Crews is like White. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! That, that 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 was hysterical. That was hysterical, man. Got to give a lot of credit to that family, man. I don't think they I always say, man. Look, when it comes to a lot of comedians, they're very, very underrated because you know, hey, sometimes a lot of the old school guys get lost in the shuffle. But the impact that they had on culture, if you really go back and look at it, I mean, like I said, Def Comedy Jam. When you think about the 90s, you got to think about four things when it comes to the culture. Deaf Comedy Jam, Comic View, In Living Color, and the Arsenio Hall Show. Absolutely. Can't forget that. 